Welcome to the show. Coming to you today from the heart of Kelowna, the corner of Lawrence and Pandozi. This is an area where there's all kinds of cool things going on. And speaking of cool things, we got a great show for you today. We're dropping into the brand new art center here called Karmic Bazaar Arts and Treasures. We're going to meet some of the artists and check out their fantastic, original, unique local art. Now we're talking to Tate McGuire, one of the founders here of Karmic Bazaar. This place is pretty cool. Thank you. Yeah, we've it's been a labor of love. Yeah, this place is uh, pretty remarkable with the windows and the light. We're loving it. Yeah. How many artists do you have uh, that are operating out of here? So out of the bazaar alone, we have 20, 22, I think, as of this weekend, uh, BC artists curated in the space, as well as three artists in active studios. So 24, actually. Yeah. Uh, that must make it uh, pretty pretty cool for people to be able to come down here and see the artists at work as well as you know see such a huge range of stuff because it's really really diverse yes it's uh, diversity is key yeah eclectic mix we we call a lot of the art we curate uh, whimsically dark that's kind of the the tonality we go for it's a lot of stuff I don't actually see in Kelowna as, as a local so yeah we're, we're excited to bring that art into the community you know like Tim Burton's a huge influence of mine with my art but uh, I know he's quite popular and a lot of uh, tattoo studios for example they, they sort of tread this line as well and we're actually neighbors to three of them so there is definitely a, a lure to it so yeah so talk a little bit about your work I mean I'm, I'm familiar with you from your incredible leather masks yes uh, karmic design so a little spin on karmic bazaar I do all the leather work in the space um, I've made masks for years uh, leather cuffs jewelry I'm starting to tread into masks made from animal skulls and LED lights. There's a story with each piece and I'm, I'm really into like the darker stuff as well. Kelowna Costumes carried my stuff for years and yeah, I've done a lot of custom stuff for Comic-Con enthusiasts. So yeah, leather's definitely my, my tool of the trade. <laughs> now we're talking to a homegrown talent, Pearl Prattley, these really cool stained glass animals. Thanks. Um, I got into doing painting. Um, I found it was just a really good way to express a lot of things for me. So I started doing these stained glass animals and they've been really popular. I've been selling them around town and uh, I've got a couple more in the works. I plan on maybe adding a bear and a cougar and maybe some bighorn sheep, some local animals. So what's it like to be part of this space here? It's really great, you know, I love it. I got in touch with so many other artists that I wouldn't have heard about before. Um, it's a great space for community as well. Um, it's been fantastic. And it's nice to have some place where, where people can come in and see a range of stuff that's so, so different. It's Yeah, absolutely. You find completely unique things here that you wouldn't find anywhere else, which is what I really like. Um, it's kind of an eclectic work, which is not something you typically see. Now we've come into a space shared by uh, Micah and Chris. Really neat stuff. Uh, I love your sculptural designs here. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Just definitely, they're um, mostly uh, an influence from industrial and kind of a steampunk idea. And I just love the Edison bulbs. And I've always been interested in uh, just lights and building things. And uh, just one day, I just decided to pick it up. So here's the the inspiration behind everything. Behind everything. So yeah, it just. It really came out of necessity one day. I just needed a shelf, and I spent a couple hours at Rona, and uh, I was just like, okay, let's see what I can build. Tate and Janelle, actually, the owners of Karmic, decided that they thought it would be a good idea for me to bring my stuff in. So um, here it is, yeah, and people like it. So I'm all right with that. That's good. Now, now Chris, your, your paintings kind of seem to mirror the, uh, I don't know, I, I see rust and decay almost, uh, which kind of feels similar to the kind of sculptural work. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why Mike and I kind of like, well, I wouldn't say we join forces necessarily, but um, our work kind of reflects sort of a similar mood. Um, I do a lot of, like, most of my stuff is in abstract landscapes. Um, so, they, yeah, they, they vary from really looking like a landscape to not looking like a <laughs> landscape at all. Um, I do a lot of digital artwork, so I'm bringing some of my other work, uh, digital artwork, into pieces as well, so bringing it into traditional work. What's it like uh, ha having a space like this where there are so many different artists? It's really good um, because uh, you, you can kind of like feed off of everybody's, you know, their different energies and uh, their different styles and kind of get inspired. So it's, and it's really cool because we can actually work in here. So people can actually come in and watch, watch you get, uh, go through painting and do it over again and over again and over again until you get it right. 
I'm an international artist and I'm a multidisciplinary artist. So I work in every medium. My work has a lot of texture in it and a lot of layers. And what I have today on display in this space is a mixture of paintings and drawings and small fragments, small studies. You've got some really cool like little pocket nudes and stuff that you have yeah. here. Fun ways for people to get engaged in your art. Absolutely. These are little little studies that they can take away and take home with them. And I'm going to be creating them here in the studio. And what I'm doing is just little formal studies and color studies for a much larger piece that I'm going to be creating and displaying in the space in the near future. And it's going to be a painting based on the Venus de Milo sculpture. What's it like being in the hub of activity like this? Oh, it's wonderful. And it's, it's funny you should mention that because I have a home studio and I would use that to create my larger pieces because I do very large scale nudes, like eight to 10 foot nudes. I'm doing an installation coming up soon at Lake Country Art Gallery, a mural for the exterior of their building. Wow. And I also do my messy work at home that I make with graphite and charcoal and <laughs> Conte. And then I do my work that involves the female nudes because I draw from life. I draw from a nude model and paint from a nude model so obviously can't do that in this space so this is a fun way for me to do smaller scale work and um, also engage with the public because they're not going to find me in my home studio and today it's just been super busy in here and I've been able to connect with other artists and also people that have never seen me before seen my work and so I've been able to explain my process it's been a lot of fun. Well, Janelle, you managed to slip away for a minute? I did, yes. It's been super busy today. Must so be exciting for you. It's so exciting. We're delighted to be here, set up, and got our signage up finally. And yeah, it's been awesome. So if people want to drop by and check you out, probably the best way is to check you out online first to find out your hours and what's new going on? Yes, definitely. We have a lot of social media presence, so Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. We have a website, and if you Google us, we pop right up with our hours. So. It's going to spell K-A-R-M-Y-C, bizarre. Yes, that's right. We had to be different. <laughs> well, you're very different, very cool. It's very exciting, and uh, thanks for sharing it with us. Thank you so much. That's it for the show. I'm Doug Brown. This is Janelle. We'll see you next time on Go.